how do you reach the hip hop generation? And many of us really don't know how to hit how to reach the hip hop generation. What do you say to them? How do you reach them? How do you engage them? And more importantly, how do you get them to do business? Our TED speaker can explain that in detail. Her innovative ideas to reach the hip hop generation ninth to 12th grade and teach them business skills and help them to establish their own businesses to take out into the world. It's truly been an extraordinary event. Our next TED speaker is Dr. Patrice Allen. The year was 2016, and I was attaining my doctorate from Prairie View A&M University. And while we were in academia, I had to learn to love to read books again. So I took a shortcut and started with audiobooks. I was intrigued to learn about the leadership style of Abraham Lincoln. And some of you may know, his entire cabinet were his enemies. And while I was listening to the book while writing to Wheatley High School as a teacher at the time, I heard a word that would forever change my life. I couldn't believe that they put all these letters around the word fact. So I pressed rewind. The word was indefatigable. I got to Google and said, what does this word mean? I read persistent tirelessly. Persistent tirelessly. That's me. And in the words of Kevin Gates, it simply means I don't get tired. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Patrice Allen, and I have the wonderful privilege of telling you about the journey of a unique program known as the G-Unity Business Lab. So before I can tell you what the program is, I'm gonna continue the story to show you how the stars aligned. So yes, I went on to graduate with my doctorate. And at that time, I assumed that that would catapult me into my next step of my dream becoming an assistant principal. But the powers that be decided that wasn't for me at that moment. Now, I had been a teacher for six years, a teacher specialist for three years. I knew that it was my time. But it's something like that Mamba mentality. If you're not going to teach me the business side of things and education, I'm gonna go learn them. So I snuck and got an MBA. I went to Lamar University enrolled in the Master's of Business Administration program. After the first year, my mentor took a chance on me. I was now an assistant principal of DD Middle School. I was killing it at DD Middle School. My sixth grade hallway was intact. My English teachers were growing daily. I knew this is where I, meant to, I was meant to be. Then I graduated in May of 2021. Dr. Opal Harrison Ford, my principal at the time, my mentor that took a, time, a chance on me was attaining her doctorate too, so it was a moment of celebration. But in the midst of that, news was made worldwide. 50 Cent was moving to Houston. And upon him entering Houston, Texas, he announced with our superintendent that he was starting an education program, the G-Unity Business Lab. So I started to make calls. I simply wanted to volunteer with the program. I felt I had something to contribute. Then I got a call. They want you to apply to run the program. I applied, and it was the weirdest interview I've ever had with my hiring manager, Dr. Ken Davis. I was ready for the questions about, tell me about a conflict. Tell me how you did this. We simply talked about my vision. And vision is divinity. He called me back and said, you have the job. So I had to go back to my mentor who took this chance on me a year in and said, hey, I'm about to pivot. And if anybody knows me, I like to stay the straight and narrow. See, after assistant principal, I'm supposed to be the principal, go on to be the superintendent of a large urban school district. And I'm also supposed to be the president of the United States. No one ever told me that the senior manager role was a part of that trajectory. But I went for it. And upon attaining that job, I walked in and said, well, let me start Googling. Who can I contact about the G-Unity Business Lab? I ran into the G-Unity Foundation, but no G-Unity Business Lab. 
So I was puzzled. I had no one to call. And I saw it as an opportunity of something I have deemed clawing in the dark. I had the opportunity to create and develop and manage this program. So I began with his book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. I was, now the audio book was not working for me, so I decided to annotate this book with the lens of a teacher. How could I convey these lessons? Lessons like work alone until you become an asset that they can't get rid of. How do I convey that to a high school student with entrepreneurial education curriculum, with many other aspects that they need to know a part of an MBA curriculum that is at a high collegiate level. And so what I generated was a 10 lesson curriculum. Each lesson consisted of 100 PowerPoint slides. And I have to re reiterate, I don't get tired. I have three children, a 13 year old, a nine year old, and a four year old. My four-year-old is autistic nonverbal. So in the midst of creating these PowerPoints where I'm not sleeping, neither is he. So the adventure started. I knew we were going to the hood. I knew we were going to Cashmere Gardens, Fifth Ward, and Sunnyside. That was the first year. I have to also let you know that due to the success of the program, we evolved the second year to go to Studewood. Third Wood, I mean Third Ward, and Harm Clark. Now I'm no stranger to the hood. I was born and raised in Harm Clark. I went to Jones High School, South Park High. I taught at Wheatley in Fifth Ward. I have my street credibility, but this was different. I had to take what I knew as an adult about the terms of survival, meet these kids where they were, and institute some key components from the key foundational term as hustle. So the program started. I met with my principals. We interviewed teachers. I met some amazing teachers. We hired two teachers at each campus. These teachers supported me as I, over two years, interviewed 700 students. Each interview I sat in. They'll tell you the best question I asked them was, you see that pen right there? Sell it to me. Now they begin to probe, like, are you seriously going to let me just think outside the box? I want you to think all the way outside the box. I knew then they were different. After we selected 25 students at each campus, we took them through the HISD application that some adults struggle through. And I learned that there are some things that we had to prepare these students for with life that are outside of the classroom. Some didn't have social security cards. Some didn't have ID. Some weren't citizens. Just a minor bump in the road. Because the caveat to this program that many didn't know is that we paid these students to endure this program. So the students that we selected, 28 weeks of a curriculum and an incubator phase, and they endured it. It was more than just staying after school with the teachers, they began to meet mentors. All our finance lessons were taught by bankers, from Chase Bank to Stellar Bank to EverFi, who built out an online platform for us. Our last week with business law was taught solely by lawyers. And in between, I met some amazing entrepreneurs who can pour into these students based on their stories. Imagine the CEO of the year who graduated from Worthing in Sunnyside coming back to tell them how she did it. It was those individuals that made a greater impact than my curriculum. Those children are forever indebted to those people that did it for free. But outside of that, they were also afforded experiences. They did not only go to a Rockets game, they went to 50 Suite. They didn't go to a Texans game, they went to 50 Suite. Imagine students that have never been in NRG Stadium saying, I can eat all of this food? You absolutely can, and if you don't like it, throw it away, try again. It was truly monumentous to see how they gravitated toward these experiences and exited a different human being. They ultimately presented their businesses to Curtis at the end of the year in what we call the hustle tank. And you can ask any individual that met any kid at the beginning, middle part of the G-Unity Business Lab. They were simply not the same. So they did some research on us. And these students developed what was known as entrepreneurial mindset 
It's a gap in research. High school students that study entrepreneurship study it theoretically. College students and beyond study entrepreneurship practically. What they did was collide two aspects and create entrepreneurial mindset. It consists of resiliency, resourcefulness, and solution-oriented thinking. Three skills that translate to any facet in life as an adult. Now, I also did my own research. I wanted to know how to do a TED Talk. I ain't gonna tell you how much time I spent on that, but the conclusion, I have to give the audience a call to action. So, while it may not be in your path to create a G-Unity Business Lab, it just may be in your path to contribute to the growth of a child in an underserved community. And there's three ways you can do that. One, think outside the box. This generation coming up under us is already thinking critically away from the box. So we have to catch up. Two, give someone a chance. So many times we feel that we've made it and it's hard for us to reach back. Create the opportunity, seek guidance on making it come to fruition and give someone in need a chance. And lastly, be your best indefatigable self. Thank you.